In this lesson, we're going to be talking about chords in circles. A chord is a section across a circle that touches both sides, or uh, any two points on the circle. So for instance, uh, B, E here. B is a point on the circle, and E is a point on the circle. The line that connects those two is called a chord. Now, obviously that means that a diameter is a type of chord. It's just a special chord, because it actually goes right through the center of the circle. So a diameter, specifically by definition, is a chord that hits the center. Any other line that goes from one side of the circle to the other is another type of chord. It just doesn't have that special you know, uh, designation of being a diameter. Now the theorems we're going to work with here, there are four of them. The first one tells us that if we have either any one circle or any two congruent circles, two, so two circles that are the same size, the minor arcs that are described by a chord, so if we have chord BE here, of course that also describes the arc BE or EB, right? The minor arcs on any two circles are congruent if their corresponding chords are congruent. So if we know, for instance, that BE, the chord right here, is equal to CD right here, then we know that the arc CD is congruent to the arc BE. And if we knew, for instance, that, say, CD over here, the arc, was congruent to BE, this arc over here, then we would also know that those corresponding chords were then congruent as well, so across two different circles or within the same circle. Our second theorem is that the perpendicular bisector of a chord is also a diameter. Now this makes, makes sense if you think it through. No matter how long a chord is, if we take any two points on a circle and we connect them with a line, no matter how long that line is or how far apart they are on the circle, if we draw a line that's perpendicular to them, then that line is going to have to be going through the center of that circle, or of that chord. If it goes through the center of that chord, making it a bisector, and if it's perpendicular to that chord, then it's going to go right through the center of the circle every time. If we do a shorter one over here, if we bisect it at the center, and this is 90 degrees right here, then this line that we're making will go right through the center of the circle. So the perpendicular bisector of any chord is also a diameter of the circle. All right, so theorem 3 tells us that if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its corresponding arc. So this one is the, the reverse of the last one. Theorem 3 is the reverse of theorem 2. It tells us that if we have a diameter and we know that it's perpendicular to a given chord, then we also know that that diameter must have bisected that chord and, of course, then bisected the arc that's connected to that chord because the only way to get a diameter that goes through a given chord is to bisect that chord. And then finally, theorem number four tells us that if we have the same circle, or two circles that are the same, two chords are congruent if they're the same distance from the center. So if we were to start right here at the center of the circle at E, and we were to draw a line straight across, obviously the shortest distance to any two points is a straight line, right? If I were to draw a straight line up here to this new chord I just drew in, if this distance here, E, is the same as the line over here at G and the line over here at F, then I know that this line right here that I just drew in must be congruent to or the same as these other two lines. You can't draw a chord that's a given distance from the center of a circle and have it be a different length than another chord that's the same distance from the center of the circle. Obviously, no matter where I draw that R or that, uh, that chord, if it's a given distance from the center of the circle, the only way to hit that distance is to do a specific length across the circle, and it's going to be the same anywhere around it. So anytime I have any two circles that are the same, or any single circle, if I have two lines that are the same distance from the center, those two lines are going to be identical. And that's it. So we're going to use those four theorems in our example questions, and we'll see how they apply.